Ziggler. Ziggler. Inspiring true performance. Well, good morning, gentlemen. It's an honor to be here with you and to have you be willing to share with our audience at Selling Among Wolves and Christian Business Daily some insights into the men that you are, the history, the organization, how you got to where you are. And I wanted to start off so they can ask you if you wouldn't mind, what is, what is, in your opinion, your most important accomplishment? I believe being married to the same beautiful wife for well over 60 years and we're having more fun now than ever before. Uh, we took marriage seriously from the day we met. And when I proposed and she accepted, finally, uh, <laughs> I, I was courting her all the time. And after 60 plus years of marriage, I still court her every day. I'm always trying to score points with her. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, and that's a good testimony. How did you get into being a speaker? And were you ever afraid, especially when you first started doing it, were you ever afraid of getting in front of an audience and doing that? <laughs> Well, first of all, I heard a man named Bob Bale uh, make a speech, and I'd never seen anybody have so much fun and do so much good, and I thought make so much money. And I related to all of those things. Mm -hmm. So uh, when the evening was over, I cornered him, and we took him to dinner, my wife and I did, and uh, asked him questions. How do you get started doing what you're doing? And he was kind enough uh, to spend quite a little time telling me some of the steps I could take if I wanted to do the same thing. I was already doing some speaking in a limited basis, but uh, what he had to say to me was very meaningful. And I've been fortunate to have other people who entered my life and were willing to teach me things and guide me through some of the pitfalls of life. What would you say to somebody who wants to follow in your footsteps, if you will? Not exactly, but they know that they want to speak and they want to communicate things, and they're trying to figure out, how do I break into that? What advice would you give them? I would say to them, first of all, uh, that you should join the National Speakers Association because they have a path you can run on. There are a lot of great teachers there, a lot of successful people there, and you will learn some of the pitfalls and some of the benefits of becoming a speaker. Uh, first of all, your personal life is going to be extraordinarily important. Uh, it's not just what you say, but it's who you are that is really the mm -hmm, important mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got the right person with the right attitude and the right values, that's a foundation you can build on. Then you join the Speakers Association, attend the meetings, and learn from those who are already successful doing this. Well, you talk about learning. You've been doing this for a good while. What, what would you think would be your biggest mistake? People make mistakes. Maybe you haven't, but I'm assuming you probably have. Yeah. That, that you've learned from that you could share with other people. Well, if you don't learn from it, uh, you're backing up because you never stay in the same spot very long. You've got to always be growing or you will be fading back. Uh, I encourage people, if they're speaking, and I don't care how long they've been doing it, I encourage them to be a constant student. Uh, my research clearly shows that the more you know about anything, the more you become creative when you use new things that you have just learned. That also brings more enthusiasm and it lets your audiences know that you're still a student. You're doing things still after all of these years that make a difference in people's lives. My uh, whole belief in life is you can have everything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. That shifts the cameras from you to the people you're trying to inspire, encourage, and benefit. Well, you know, this morning, you guys in invited me to do the devotional for the Ziegler Corporation. And probably the thing that, that grabbed me the most was watching you sit there and take notes. And I thought to myself, here's a man who I have so far to go to catch up on and knowing anything about, and you are sitting there and not the least bit uh, uncomfortable with, oh, here's something I hadn't thought of, and taking a note and learning from it. And you were modeling that this morning. I have two books that I take with me everywhere I go. It's always in my briefcase. One is my Bible, of course. Mm -hmm. The other one is a notebook that I can take notes in. 
And when I take those notes, uh, I carefully uh, keep them uh, because sometimes what you first heard, when you, uh, you know, when you think about it a little bit, uh, that wasn't as good as I thought it was. Or sometimes we say, man alive, that's even better. Am I ever glad I took those mm -hmm. notes? Mm -hmm. I have a brilliant memory. Unfortunately, it's very short. <laughs> yeah. Mark. Michael, I was going to say that uh, a lot of times we get asked that question, or I get asked that question, why has Dad been so successful all these years? And I always go back to his humility. Mm. Uh, he's always open to new ideas and listening. And here at the company, we, of course, get many requests from speakers who want to associate with us or have questions. And there's really another, you know, there's two hard parts in a speaker. One is getting started, and the second one is when somebody gets their first taste of success and they start believing the press clippings mm -hmm. and all the applause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you lose focus, as soon as you realize you're not on the stage to benefit others, but you start thinking about how it's benefiting you, mm -hmm. that's when we get what we call speakeritis. And that's where the ego gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And people can see that. And that really is something that impacts people negatively. So dad's been able to avoid that. And one of the evidences of that we were just talking about is him taking notes when, when somebody's talking. Well, you know, um, in the scripture it says that God gives grace, which is his ability working in and through us to do what we couldn't do on our own. And he's giving his, his grace to the humble. And by uh, humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. And what I've evidenced when I've wa watched my interaction here and what I've seen when I've seen you on and off stage is that walking in humility. Now, Zig, you were talking about uh, what it takes to succeed in, in, um, as a speaker. And Tom pointed out one of your strongest traits was the trait of being humble, walking in humility. And I noticed today you spent some time sharing with us the wall of gratitude. Tell us about the wall of gratitude. Uh, those are the men and women that I started uh, benefiting from their teaching and their love and their concern for me. Uh, they were always encouraging me. So uh, I believe encouragement is the oxygen of the soul. And as individuals, regardless of what our role in life is, when we have an opportunity to encourage somebody else to do even better, I believe that that's a touch that will make a difference in that person's life. And incidentally, for the person who makes the suggestion, it's going to be a very big benefit for them down the road if they make that a part of who they are. Mm -hmm. It's not about me is what it's saying. It's about what can I do for you? Can I help you? It's a wonderful, wonderful concept and it's biblically sound. All right, I wanna know what, I mean, you've accomplished so much in your life. You've written numerous books, lots of best-selling books. He impacted my life back in the 70s with See You at the Top, and you've written many, many books since then. What unfulfilled dream are you still working on now? <laughs> you know, I, I think I would be selfish if I were working on even more. I've been so fortunate to have so many good teachers and role models that I've been able to follow who've taken an interest in me uh, that uh, what I'm trying to do now is to pass it on down to others. Things, philosophies, concepts, value characteristics that will make a difference in their lives. My greatest joy comes when I receive a letter from somebody who says, what you said to me literally enhanced my life dramatically. I've had scores of letters from people say, you know, uh, your advice on marriage uh, literally saved my marriage, and I just want to thank you for that. That's what rings my joy bell more than anything else when I've been privileged following the principles that work and impact other people's lives in it. Ziggler. 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 Inspiring true performance.